Are you ready for some Jersey? Well, we've got Jersey. The zipper was made here. The light bulb was made here. The color television calls the Garden State home. Everybody wants to know about New Jersey. Sandy beaches, beautiful cities. We even have the Jersey Turnpike. Inventors, music, the movies. You need an exit? We got them too. You want Jersey? This is Jersey. Welcome to this edition of This is Jersey. We're in Homedale, Monmouth County today, visiting the enormous mixed-use marvel known as Bell Works. This fascinating historic building was once a research and development facility for the Bell System and was designed by architect Eero Saarinen, who also designed the Gateway Arch in St. Louis. Today, the building has been acquired by Somerset Development as being repurposed as a metroburb, a metropolitan experience in a suburban environment. The focus of the project is to create a live, work, play community experience where companies, employees, and residents can come together every day. The space includes traditional and cooperative office space, as well as a cafe, and upon completion, will include retail, shops, restaurants, a gym, library, medical facilities, and a hotel. We have Somerset Development's president, Ralph Zucker, with us today to tell us all about his vision for this remarkable building. As we walk down the hall in Bellworks, how did you find this place? Uh, a broker found it, uh, called us up, a guy by the name of Bill Hetler, and uh, he had known about our redevelopment uh, prior work, and he said, uh, Ralph, this one's for you. Now this was vacant, Lucent had just left many years earlier. What did you see when you walked in? We came in and we saw a lone guard sitting at the Eurosterinin little yellow carpet area at the time. We saw vines growing all over the place, cobwebs. It just was this abandoned building. But we also saw an incredible pedestrian street. We saw the uh, makings of a great metroburb, a metropolis in suburbia, we, the clean lines, the incredible scale. You know, we're new urbanists by trade. Uh, I've done a lot of new urbanist communities. And thinking about creating great places for great people, I don't want to say it was a no-brainer, but it was really uh, the canvas almost painted itself. So you saw this huge building, but who were you going to put in it back then? Well, we knew that we had to create a mixed-use environment. Uh, we knew that the building was too large in its current location for any one user. The building, uh, people said the building was obsolete. The building was not obsolete. Uh, the zoning was obsolete. It was zoned for one single tenant, and they weren't coming to suburban New Jersey. So we focused on creating uh, a great mixed-use environment retail, hospitality, restaurants, um, you name it, all the gym, library, uh, office, 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 residential. We didn't know exactly what type of office. We didn't know exactly who the tenants are going to be, which restaurants. But we focus on the groups and the flexibility, the ability to sort of go with the flow. You really invented an industry because that was never seen here in New Jersey or even throughout the country, am I right? I really didn't see it in New Jersey, but, to, but mixed use um, as a tool for repurposing does exist. Uh, we went out to um, Torino in Italy uh, to see a place called Lingotto, uh, Renzo Piano, redevelopment of a former Fiat factory. Uh, great bones, great canvas to paint a great mixed-use environment. Um, so there are places in the universe that were an inspiration for us, but in uh, suburban New Jersey, no, the world was struggling. What do you do with these old white elephants, these dinosaurs, these uh, uh, underutilized or vacant uh, office parks? So when you arrived on this campus around 2008, the economy wasn't so good. How did you try to work through that process as well as trying to develop something that really wasn't here before? So actually, you know, in a perverse way, the um, economy worked well for us. Um, we were drawing up the contract as the last limos were pulling out of Lehman Brothers. And that allowed us to negotiate a deal with Alcatel Lucent that gave us the time and the flexibility uh, to rezone uh, Bell Labs into Bell Works in a hot, 
uh, real estate market. Uh, we would not have been able to take the time. The sellers would not have given us the time to go ahead and rezone, create this um, area in need of redevelopment, this redevelopment plan. I don't believe the community would have been as receptive if people would have been just ready to rent existing office space, quote unquote. Uh, although it still needed to be repositioned, but the fact that the economy had actually crashed actually worked out well for us. And it gave us the five years that we needed to turn Bell Labs into Bell Works, to get the mixed use zoning, and to work with the community to create the great place that you see here today. Right. Now you weren't welcomed right away. I wouldn't say we weren't welcomed. I would say that the community, uh, we had to earn the community's trust. Um, you know, uh, when you walk into a municipality, a town, and you say, okay, we're here to redevelop your largest single asset, um, your biggest rateable, something that's clearly going to influence the way you live. Uh, it's understandable when a community is a little bit uh, um, um, uncomfortable, a little bit uh, uh, cautious, and we understood that. Uh, we did not take anything personally. We had our work cut out for us to earn the community's trust, and we did that slowly. Um, I think they saw that we mean what we say, and after a while, they stopped waiting for the other shoe to drop and sort of joined in the party. We see a lot of glass, which really wasn't here when you arrived. What, what was the thought behind the glass and the openness here? Well, Eero Saarinen always created um, his mission here, Western Electric, Bell Labs, tasked Eero Saarinen to create a collaborative environment, a place where people sort of came out of their offices, away from their cubicles, into a common area to try and cross-pollinate, share ideas. Uh, it used to be over a cigarette, if you see all those old ashtrays lining the atrium. But the space between the glass on the outside and the inside, we had these long hallways and then solid walls with almost no penetrations at all. No fenestration, no windows. If you didn't open a door, you didn't see the outside. Because we were also uh, applying for Bell Labs to be on the National Register of Historic Places, we had to deal with both the state of New Jersey, the State Historic Preservation Office, and the National Park Service, the federal government, to allow us to make this change to the original uh, building. Alexander Gorlin, who's the um, lead architect, uh, sort of the town architect for Bell Works, um, created this great language of this three-foot module that you see on the exterior, and we brought it onto the interior glass. That allowed us to liberate this really incredible space, and you see these beautiful floor plates, 72,000 square feet at a shot. We're putting in about five miles of glass. Um, these mullions had to be custom made, the doors had to be custom designed, all to fit into the building vernacular, the building language, which we did, and the results are incredible. Now we talk about glass, but on your roof you also have glass that creates solar. Tell me about the solar energy here. Uh, we have uh, an almost quarter of a mile long skylight with thousands and thousands of panes of glass. Uh, it has a great patina, uh, but the glass itself needed work. Clearly needed to be replaced. Once we were replacing it, we decided uh, to use that as an opportunity to green the building or further green the building. They are custom making for us, and a lot of it is installed already, um, transparent, totally transparent, or almost totally transparent, um, uh, photovoltaic glass that when it's fully installed, I understand will be the world's largest um, photovoltaic skylight and will provide about 15% of the energy for our common space. We have to take a break, but we come back. I want to talk about your retail space and what the future is for Bellwork and tell all the events that you're having. We'll do that when we come back. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to This Is Jersey. We're in Homedale today at the former Bell Labs building, now known as Bell Works. And we're learning about how this complex is gradually being transformed into a hub for businesses and the community that live, work, and play together. The building was outdated and in disrepair when it was acquired and has been the job of Paola Zamudio, creative director, to bring it into the 21st century. Designing and furnishing this building is no easy task, and Paola is here to tell us more about what she's doing to make Bell Works beautiful. Oh, it's a dream job for me. Uh, every day is different, as you can imagine, this building with the history, with what we're creating for the future, it's 
an adventure to be able to work with all the architects, the designers, the artists, the filmmakers, the everybody, all these creative types at Bellworks is, is really a dream. Tell me your history. How did you get involved with design? I went to school for communications uh, in Miami, but then I decided that I love interior design and also fashion. So I came to New York and I went to the new school in Parsons for fashion and then also for interior design. And then I decided to do a master's in Italy for trend forecasting, so forecasting of trends. So it all, it's like all related, the art, fashion, architecture, design, and yeah, just I love everything that is like trends and fun. <laughs> so when you first looked at this building, what did you see? What was your vision? The first time I came, um, it was a rainy day. It was dark, no one was here. And I literally, I saw the future. Uh, first of all, by meeting Ralph and understanding his vision and walking with him and he taking the time to express what he wanted to do in the building. I saw it and I understood because I also kind of like did some research on Aerosarinen and what he did in the past of like creating this building for collaboration, for meeting people, for doing all these experiments and all of these inventions. So I realized, yes, we are in a time that we want to do that. And I understood the vision and I saw it how Aero designed the, the whole building is that people will run into each other, each other in the hallways and everything. Here, what we are trying to do, basically, the first space that I designed was the cafe in the middle. And it was just simple, just a space where people could just sit down with their laptop and meet other people. And that's how the whole ball started rolling. You know, and then when Ralph told me, oh, let's design offices, I started designing open space offices, but also, you know, to have collaboration, but also like to be inspired, not to be in a cubicle, not to be like, you know, constrained. So it's, you know, it's kind of understanding where we are, what people want, that connection. We're so connected to social media and Facebook and Instagram that we're kind of losing that humanity, you know? So this is the cool thing about Bellworks is that people, we're creating a community and people are here to see each other's eyes, you know, to talk. We can work from anywhere. I could work from New York every day if I wanted to, but I really love just coming here, feeling the energy, meeting people, and that's very important, I think. In reference to the public space, tell me some of your design ideas. And I know the original color flooring is still there. Are you going to keep that? So yes, we want to keep some elements. It's obviously the historic elements. We want to keep the integrity of those elements because we don't want to change what this masterpiece is it's just perfect as it is it's, it's great bones beautiful but we do want to bring some new elements so i call it retro futuristic because we keep the retro but we add some futuristic elements so i like to bring color um, i love using color so i don't know if you saw in the main atrium we have some uh, frank gary um, seating that we use and now uh, in like six months we're going to receive some uh, special seating that we designed with a um, an artist from London called Ron Arad. He designed this really cool sitting um, just because he came to the space and he saw it and he was like, I need to make something special. So that's, for example, something new. But he is, for example, uh, like uh, connecting it to the flooring that we did on the main atrium. That's a Joseph Albers tile uh, pattern. And that was from the mid century modern era. So it's all of these, like, kind of like respecting, but also bringing it to him future and like very ahead of. In reference to the space that's here now, what did you help design and, and what were you thinking when you did certain ones? The first set of pre-builds that we designed for, for Bellworks, these were meant to be like show offices and I had the freedom to design each one with a different theme, a different look. So I did a lot of research and for example, the first one is very industrial looking. That's the co-working space, the vibe co-working space. We want it to be uh, kind of keep the open ceiling, the concrete, the polished concrete, bring wood elements um, because that was our first co-working space. And we did also one called Bauhaus Futura, which is in reference to the Bauhaus art movement of the 50s era. And we did another one like based on Eros Saarinen's dream. I call it Eros dream. Um, I use a lot of tulips because Ero loved tulips and I Every office I try to give it like a little, you know, sense of where we are uh, connecting the dots. And um, now I just, I'm doing all of the pre other pre-builds in, in, in the other buildings and 
they're more catered for each tenant that is moving in. You just also did the outside terrace? Oh yeah, so I designed the outdoor roof deck um, in collaboration with um, Melilo and Bauer and our master architect Alexander Gorlin. And that was great because, you know, it's very mid-century modern, but it feels new and it's just people love sitting out there and it's, it's amazing. I know there's a lot of things that are going on in here at Bellworks. Can you share some of the things that we should look forward to in 2018 and 2019? We are constructing all this big building, but what we are more excited about is the people who are coming here and that are creating a community and the community sense is what's important. For example, we had an eclipse viewing party and we thought there was going to be only like 900 people and actually 4,000 people came to see the eclipse here. People from New York, like, it's just like, it's the icon of the building, but it's also like, the people are excited to meet other people and to see what's happening. So I am, I'm super, super excited about the whole, like, art programs, film, film pro programs, community programs, the um, library that is coming here. Um, we want to do a museum to preserve all the artifacts that that are in this building that we find every day. It's just really incredible, all the patents. We have downstairs a patent wall where all the scientists will put their patents every day showing them. We are really excited about the retail aspect of Bellwars, all the shops that are coming in, the food hall that is going to be run by world-known chef. And also like uh, the Salon Concrete, which is a beauty salon and a flower shop and the daycare, so many little elements. It's really going to become like a little city and uh, we're excited about that. And also the hotel that we're building on the rooftop. And we're very excited for everything that is coming up at Bellworks. It's really inspiring to see this, uh, what we're creating and also to share it with the world. When we return, we'll hear from Somerset Development's president, Ralph Zucker, to tell us all about his vision for this remarkable building. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to This is Jersey. We're continuing our conversation here at Bellworks with Ralph Zucker, president of Somerset Development, about the ongoing redevelopment of the building, the tenants who are quickly moving in, and the amenities it will offer once it's completed. I understand 80% of the building is now committed to be leased who were some of those companies and how'd you get them? The first companies that came here um, were small. I remember signing our first lease. It was 1,200 square feet with a local broker, actually. And uh, my heart was in my mouth. Uh, because, he still has that uh, spot, He right? still has that spot. And uh, I knew that I'm committing in a 2 million square foot building. I'm committing at least for five years to keep it operating for a 1,200 square foot lease. Um, what we did was we, early on, people would come in here, they would say, wow, this is incredible. But they had a hard time believing that we could actually pull it off. And they had an even harder time seeing themselves within the space. So what we did was we actually created seven pre-built offices, sort of like the offices you see here today. And we had imaginary tenants. Uh, we gamed what type of tenants would come here and we fully built out and furnished seven offices. We also uh, created the uh, Atrium Cafe, and we'd bring food in the morning and give it away at night, just so that if somebody came into the lease, they would see what it would feel like when it was more active. And little by little, people started coming. We started with Vi doing a co-working space. Some tenants started coming. Uh, we had NVIDIA that came in and took some space for their autonomous vehicle research. And little by little, that grew. Workwave, Guardian Life, Santander Bank, JCPNL, iSIMS, International Flavors and Fragrances, and on and on and on. A lot of great companies that are here. And really, these companies were drawn here because they were looking for something better. And for a company like that to come here, it's a huge commitment. The infrastructure that they have to build in a, to be in a place like Bell Works and try to make it work within the constraints of this mixed-use environment. But they wanted an inspirational place for their people. Companies no longer are interested, nor can they get away, with just hiring employees, paying them a living wage, and saying, here, this is where you're going to work. The employees, the, the especially millennials, more creative, they are telling their employers where they want to work and how they want to work and smart companies, the companies that are here, are catering to that desire. 
So as we look around, I know you're going to add retail. Tell me what that component is going to look like. As you can see, we've created this pedestrian street right down the center of Bellworks. Um, this street already has um, quite a few tenants, uh, restaurants, um, we have a, uh, a library, we have a daycare, uh, we're about to sign a lease for a 27,000 square foot gym, a hair salon, um, a coffee shop, or Skidoo coffee shop, and on and on and on. Uh, more to come, a, 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 a wine and tapas bar, a Mexican restaurant. Um, we just signed today, I just signed uh, five leases for a medical uh, space, 20,000 plus square feet, uh, uh, a group of medical doctors, uh, I believe even including a dentist and a pharmacy uh, in one part of our building. So the mixed use aspect of this is really coming together very nicely. And that's creating this main street, this, this pedestrian street, this center core. Uh, it's more than an amenity. It's bringing Main Street into Bellworks. You even have the Homedale Library coming here. That's really nice. We always had a vision of the community being part of Bellworks. Um, this space that you see here, um, this pedestrian street, is open to the public. And we intend to keep it open 24-7. It'll be secure, but you will be able to come in. And what better use to have than a library and a cutting-edge library at that? I understand you made a donation. Yes, we donated the space for 30 years at no cost. And in order to get it off the ground, we also made a million dollar donation as well. We also hosted a fundraiser here. And a lot of the companies that work with us all got together and chipped in and raised another substantial amount of money for the library. And the library is under construction and soon to be open. We're very proud of that. Beyond the retail and the corporate section, you also have a hotel going in and other event space. Tell me about that. We have to add more space. So we're adding one floor on top of the existing Bellworks with an eye on the history, so we're doing it historically correct. Uh, there's going to be a hotel lobby right here, separate dedicated elevators going up. Uh, we believe it's going to be about 186 keys um, with a small event space on the roof itself. Uh, we also have in the lower level an incredible conference center. Part of it existed already and we're renovating it as well as adding on, taking offices that were in the lower level and uh, changing those into really modern conference space with breakout rooms, with eating areas, with uh, the right audio-visual connections and everything else. Uh, so you'll be able to have conferences here from as small as eight people to 1,500 people or more, all on the lower level, not to mention the great event space that you have here in the atrium itself. All of these things come together to create what we like to call a metroburb, this metropolis in suburbia, this great place, heart and soul, center of a community. Beyond all this space, I know you have a lot of events here, not only for social events, but also for organizations. We always view Bellworks as Main Street, as a place for the people. This is where we want the community to come together. So we had uh, the Homedale Municipal Fireworks, which we hosted over here. Thousands of people came here during the eclipse. Almost 4,000 people came here to watch it. Uh, we've had everything here from drone races to fashion shoots to art exhibits. A few movies were shot here. Cadillac did a commercial here. The community itself, we've hosted communal fundraisers. Uh, we've had uh, tech meetups, uh, hackathon. We've already hosted an event with 3,200 people here for dinner. And that's while we're under construction. It's a place for people to gather together. All of that, it's, it's just accretive to what Bell Works really is. It's really the heart and soul of a, not just a local community, but a worldwide inspired community. We like to say work inspired, shop inspired, be inspired at Bell Works. With just a few minutes left, what's the future of Bell Works? Is there an end to all this? Well, we don't hope there's an end. Uh, we do know that it's going to continue to reinvent itself and the way we see uses today are going to change. Just think about the community uh, discovering new uses. We are approached daily with ideas, whether it's a rock climbing wall or a hanging garden or just a, a, a small communal space to exhibit some of the artifacts that were, that were here or some of the history. The tenants themselves are going to constantly reinvent themselves and the way they're working today I'm sure will change within the next 10 years. What we're pretty comfortable in saying is that Bellworks is a great place where they can all continue to evolve and continue to reinvent themselves here. We have a great canvas 
for everybody to paint the story of their life. Wow, well thank you for having us here. You're doing a great job here and good luck with all that you do. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time.